Hi guys, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. I want to discuss with you this um, thing about double summations when we're dealing with joint PDFs uh, coming from um, continuous random variables. So what we've got here are two PDFs. One is called G, one is called F. Now, PDF is here is bivariate two variables. Uh, that's not really what I'm really interested in. I'm interested in for what values is it uh, is it defined for. So it's defined for here x between 0 and b, a number b, y between 0 and d. Second, I've got a PDF, but I have got this now. x is bigger than or equal to 0, y is bigger than or equal to x, is less than or equal to b. These two things are saying different things. We can actually for each one we can think of it as a picture. You know, it's a it's a function, so we can obviously think of a picture. It's got two coordinates, I mean two inputs um, and one output coordinate, so it's three dimensional. If we just think about the input uh, graph for the input bit, we can see it's a rectangle something like this, it could be a rectangle if B does not equal to D. So what you and then you've got a third axis uh, G here, so you can imagine you've got a surface for the function G. For this one though, so yeah, for this case, the limits depend on lim uh, depend on the other variables. In other words, what we've got here is not the case of fixed limits as we've got here where x and y are just between two fixed numbers. The limits here um, are actually one of the value of the variable. So you can see that the picture for this thing here, if we look at it, is a triangle shade region. So what we're integrating over is different. Before I move on, the fact that I put zero there doesn't mean anything. Without loss of generality, I've just set to zero, but it could be uh, for any uh, number A, so long as it satisfies the usual um, conditions for, for this being a PDF. Right, so where do double integration come into this setup thing? Well, suppose I want the expected value of x, the expected value of y, and I want to calculate the expected value of the cross products, x times y. I uh, let's take up let, let's start from let's take this guy here. Expected value of x. X is continuous now. So what do we know from first year stats? We'll integrate uh, x times the f of x dx over the possible values of x. So let's put that big x to denote that. All right. But this is only applicable if I've got this uh, the PDF of x. Suppose I don't have the PDF for x. Suppose I, instead I'm given the I'm given the uh, uh, joint PDF. Okay, from now on I'm going to use f instead of g. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I'm sure I'll just use g. Let's keep it consistent. Uh, no, let's just use f. It doesn't matter in this case. No, f here is just the PDF of x. Right. So I don't have the PDF for x, but I have the joint PDF for x, y. So I want to express this in terms of the joint PDF. How do I do that? Well, here comes pretty much a proof. I integrate x, that can stay the same, but it's this thing I have to rewrite. I want to think out how can I rewrite this thing in terms of joint PDF. Let's put a bracket here to show you what's going on. Well, take the joint PDF, and just like for the discrete variable case, what we do is we integrate over out, out the other variable, like so. Think about what this is saying. If uh, for the discrete case, what it's saying that the the PDF for X, in this case we'll call it the marginal PDF for X, is obtained by t obtaining the joint PDF in, and the summing over all of Y for a given X. That's what this is saying, but in terms of continuous format. So we have it here then. You can just tidy this up. X, Y, X times the joint PDF X, Y, dy by dx. Okay. Similarly, you can easily show, doing what I've done here, that the expected value of y may be written like this. 
I say maybe because there's another way to write it which I'll come to later alright that one and we're interested in the expected value of the cross products like that. Okay, so we've got three things. Next I want to move on to computing the limits for each one because you've got to write down actually you don't have to compute, you just write down the limits for each of these guys and this is where some of us get into difficulties. I'm going to deal with the case of fixed limits because that's the easiest. Expected value of x we've said is is this thing and now we're going to put in the limits. Okay. First of all, y. Y can go from 0 to d. How about x? x can go from 0 to b. Done. And then this is like an iter it's iterated integration. We have to do it, perform it twice. So it's like first we do this bit first and then the answer to this thing will be integrated again but with respect to x. So we integrate first with respect to y and then x is what this expression says. Okay, similarly then for expected value of y, we're integrating first with respect to x. x can take the value between 0 to b and y can take the value between 0 to d. Right, and then expected value of cross product, respect first to x, the way I've written here, for respect to x, so we know x goes from 0 to b, and then respect to y goes from 0 to d, all done. And then the computation of the integral is pretty much straightforward, at least for my students. Now, in case at this point you're asking yourself the question, well, can we integrate first, if we take this one, respect to x, then to y? I reverse these two things. I'll come to that. Uh, I'll come to that at the end. Supposing I remember. Okay, great, fantastic. Now we're moving next to doing the same thing, but we're doing it for limits that depend on each other. And this is where we get stuck. At least uh, we write down the wrong limits. Right limits that depend on each other for this case here. What are the limits? Okay. What we do first we integrate with respect to y. What that means is we treat the other variable as if it's a constant. Yeah, so we just like before, but I'm just mentioning it now. So the first integral with respect to y, I'm integrating this expression with respect to y I and mean, that's treating all the other variables fixed, in this case, x. So in other words, we're trying to, it's like we're given x, yes, because that's, we're holding it, we're given x. So when we're doing the integration, it varies over what, from y to a given value of x to b. That x, all we know is could be equal to or greater than 0. But it's an x and we don't know specifically where it is. So we've got to stick the x there and then y is up to b. Okay, so that's done. And then we integrate the expression resulting from this thing I'm going to stick in brackets with respect to x. So x is now a variable and it can take any number from 0 all the way to b. All right, well, some of you at this point will be asking me or a um, bit puzzled about, well, why isn't it x between 0 to y right around here? Uh, I can give you a very easy answer to that as a rule, and I can give it a better explanation. So if you just want a clear, easy answer to that, it's always that when you set up these integrals, the outer integral should always depend only on 
numbers should not depend on the variable, but the inner integrals can depend on a mix of variables and numbers. So here the inner integral depends on the variable and the number, but the outer has to be set up so it depends on numbers. That's only if you don't, you know, you want a simple, simple. You just want to know how, how the thing, how to apply it, and you don't want to think about why it is. If you want to know why it is, that's simple as well, actually. But phew, a bit more brain power. Um, look at the inner one here. What you're saying here, you're integrating respect to y over the region x to b. Remember, we're doing it over the triangle. Um, so, um, for a given value of x, for a given value of x, say x here say x here is that it's a wrong color uh, let's pick a nice uh, okay uh, let's try that one all right say we pick this x here um, what this says is you integrate from x y equals to x which is on that line to y equals to b so in other words this strip here um, and you're integrating all the function so you're not so think about the third axis, it'll be x times fx, right? So it's like a slice, isn't it? Some kind of uh, area. And then we want it across the whole of that thing. So what this says is that since we've only got one slice here for one x, for all, we want to do it for all x, so x goes from 0 to b. So we'll all that slice, we want for the whole lot. And that is how you take it, slice, 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 slice. And that's why it's 0 to b. If you put y here, It'll be zero to another variable y, and I don't know where y could be. It could be here, so you wouldn't get the whole of that triangle.